The book is about uh, what do red look like at the national level. Because a lot of the talk so far has been about the global architecture, how it's going to be funded, the institutions set up at the global level. But to save the world's forests, we need to have action at the la national and the local level. So now we want to kind of bring red down to the local, to the national level. What are the red strategies, the policies, the actions to be taken on the ground? That's the, the, the key uh, topic of the book. They do vary, and of course, we, there's no blueprint recipe for how to do red. At the same time, I think it's, it's also very much, a lot, or a lot of valuable lessons to be learned by looking how different countries found different solutions, the countries can learn from each other, and there are valuable lessons. I think a lot of the time, red is presented as something very new. And in one way it is, the key is this performance-based payment. You want to incentivize, you want to compensate, those that use the forest for taking better care of it, for not cutting it down, for keeping it to have the carbon stored in the tree. But it will also be a lot of the policies that we have tried for years in the agriculture sector, in the energy, conservation areas, reduced demand for charcoal and firewood, uh, governance, anti-corruption, community forest management, these will also be central elements of, of RED. And what we do want is to bring all the lessons from these sectors into the RED debate, so we don't try to rediscover the wheel, but can say, we have tried this for 30 years, for 50 years, for community forest management. What are the lessons that we need to bring into, into, the, into the RED debate? Kind of educating all those that are involved, that maybe have a climate background, have not worked in this. So, to take the lessons from the past into the future. I think that can be very valuable. The, the problem with, I'm, I think we're facing the dilemma, it's where you need the action is where you have weak governance systems, corruption, you know, far away places where it's hard for kind of government policies and interventions to reach. That's where the deforestation hotspots are and most difficult to work. Um, I think there are a number of countries that are showing a strong commitment to do something. Increasingly so in Indonesia, Tanzania, Guyana, Brazil, they are committed. Yes, we want to change. They have, they have not just the prospects of large financial flows, but also a domestic commitment, national commitment saying, we are worried about climate change. We take it serious and we want to contribute. So matching this willingness to pay at the international level with a willingness to play at the national level, I think those countries will succeed. Because I think in the Copenhagen, although we may be disappointed about the outcome, it will not be perfect, I think also that we will see a strong commitment from the global community. It has to be matched by also commitment at the national level and local levels and in those cases I think it will not be perfect but we will make a, a difference. I'm, I'm worried, you know, five, six degrees with a business as usual, the possibility for maybe even further, it can be a catastrophe for billions of people and that worries me and my children and grandchildren not yet born uh, what will happen in the future. That's worrying me. As a researcher, I also think there are a few exciting issues because there are many good questions to be asked that we don't know the answer of. And as a scientist, as a researcher, as a professor of economics, I'm curious to, I would like to find out more about that. So that's also driving.